Welcome to the Dogish Podcast, the podcast dedicated to dog parents and the topics, events, and personalities impacting their lives. My name is Sylvia West, and I am the founder of Dog Up In This Bitch Dog Training, and I'm here with my co-host, Jason Arias, who is the founder of Forever USA. Jason, how are you today? I am doing fantastic, Clay. How are you doing today? Um, stoked for our guest. Yeah, me too. I'm pretty excited to hear about all the insides and the outsides and not just the dog training, but like kind of the behind the scenes. I think she's done some stuff with Amazon and HBO and all sorts of cool training for celebrities and neato stuff like that. So I love behind the scenes stuff when we get to that. Absolutely. Yes. Today we are going Hollywood with our very special guest and my dear friend, Nicole Ellis, who is a celebrity dog trainer and certified professional dog trainer. She trains dogs for sets, film and TV. Most recently, she was the safety expert and trainer on the pack on prime and is also working on her second book, uh, all about doodles in her working like a dog line. So we're so excited to have you on Nicole. I'm good. I'm super excited to be here. It's such a crazy time. So super excited always to connect. Yes, definitely. For sure. Jason, how's it going over there in Reno? Not too shabby. It's still early. It's, it's cold. That's, that's yeah. especially compared to where you guys are at. It's everything is frozen outside right now. Uh, oh, I wish we were getting all the winter feelings out here, but it's LA and we're not. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm doing my best to just like wear a different hoodie every episode because I feel like people should believe that I'm cold. Um, it's winter, everyone, I swear. Um, so, Nicole, it is National Train Your Dog Month this month. And uh, you are an amazing dog trainer, as we all know. And so I just wanted to kind of pop in and ask you for all of the new pet parents out there that may have just gotten dogs or maybe gotten a second dog in their home. What do you think is like key, key must haves for training your dog? Like, give me like the basics and what you would say to every pet parent about dog training. Absolutely. So Good thing is it's train your dog month, but it's also crazy times during a pandemic, which means everybody is getting dogs. So lots of opportunities out there, which as a trainer, I absolutely love. And I tell everybody, whether you're getting an adult dog or a puppy, set that dog up for the dog you want. So if you don't want your dog jumping on you, but he's a tiny puppy and it's cute, don't allow it now because it's going to become a problem. And it's easier just to have the structure from the beginning. So figuring out what's gonna fit your household and then making sure everyone in your household is of course on the same page. If you're doing something and your child's telling the dog something else and your husband's telling the dog something else, he's probably not gonna listen to everybody and <laughs> become the problem and I'm sure you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's on a different page always. And you're like, let's, you know, how do you tackle that when you go into a home and you have like five different personalities? I mean, I know how I do it, but I'd love to hear from, from a veteran pro like yourself. What oh, do you gosh. do when everyone's like on different pages? Um, I think figuring out the goal for everybody and helping them understand why we're doing this instead of just being like, these are the dog's rules and saying, well, we don't want him scratching us up and scratching up grandma when she comes over. So it's gonna be a lot easier to take him on adventures and on walks when he sits calmly and helping everyone understand and having them be a part of it really connects everybody. Uh, and then I think another important thing is just rewarding behavior, but figuring out what the behavior is you want. I hear a lot of people say, well, I don't want my dog jumping on me, which I totally get, but then Think about what you want your dog to do. So it's not how we naturally think. We don't discuss things like that with our friends or our family members. So instead being like, okay, what do you want him to do at the front door? Oh, I'd rather he sat down. Okay, so let's ask for that instead of punishing him. And it takes a little bit of homework. I find it's just a different way of thinking. But once we do that, things go a lot smoother. And Lastly, I'd say just doing things with your dog is so huge and mental enrichment's always forgotten about. There's so many mental enrichment things out there. I have so many blog posts on mental enrichment because yeah. I find it so important. Um, but besides from that, having your dog socialized, if you have a puppy, don't skip that socialization period. That's so huge. Um, there's a lot of contradicting information out there. So I find a lot of people are missing out on it and you don't want that to affect the dog for the rest of the dog's life and your life together. And then trying to involve your dog 
in your life. So whether that's just going for walks to coffee shops together or spending 10 minutes a day training together, those little bits are going to help you grow your bond and make a more confident dog or puppy, which is all really important. Okay. So I have a question. Yes. And, and, and this is to, to both of these fabulous trainers, whatever you guys can help. Um, I am, um, we are very close with both of our dogs, both Brownie and Max, but we're not good at like training them per se. Right. So for example, uh, Brownie, she's a, maybe a 35, 40 pound mix. And anytime somebody comes over, she gets just insanely excited. She's like bouncing all over the place. She wants to come up and give hugs. And she's like all up in their faces. And it's like, it's cute and adorable, but at the same time, it's a little frustrating or um, like she can, she has fence aggression. Like she's got these different things. And what we've noticed is that um, it's, it's a, it's nice to say, Oh, you just break the habit by using different words. But like, what are some things um, that are easy adjustments or easy tricks or something just to start with, because results breed um, uh, ambition in my, in my opinion, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, that did work. So I'll, I'll tackle something that's a little bit harder and keep working through it as opposed to simple things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, So I'll start off one of them and I'll let Sylvia jump in. Um, For example, you said your dog gets really excited at the door. And I think that's something that happens in so many families. I mean, Dogs are excited. New people are over to play with them, give them cookies. It's it's a fun time. So I get excited when Best my time. friends come over too. <laughs> so I always recommend to my clients is putting something that's elevated near your front door, such as an ottoman. I use a dog training table, but there's so many different things you can use, something that's lifted up. And the principle behind that is when a dog is elevated, they have to think a little bit more before jumping forward and running around. So this kind of helps keep our dog stationary and it's super easy to reinforce. So let's say you have your ottoman there for five minutes, just practice having your dog jump up, give him a cookie, point to it, have him jump up, give him a cookie. So he quickly learns it's super easy. Your kids can do it. Anyone in the house can do it. Grandma can do it. And then the next time someone comes over, have those cookies ready and they don't get to have pets. They don't get to have their belly rubs till they go up there and they calmly sit and they wait. And granted the first time, you're probably gonna have to get your dog to jump back up five times but that's fine. And the next time it might be four times and it will get easier. And soon someone comes to the door, your dog's going to be there just sitting and waiting. And that's what we want. We want a calm dog, that then we can say, okay, now we're going to go hike. Now we can go run around. Now that everyone's inside. And that also can prevent your dog from darting out the door, which can be really Mm -hmm. dangerous and other behaviors that we don't want, but super simple. A few minutes a day can easily make a huge difference in that. And that will, help with the jumping. It helps with the running around. It helps with going crazy in the beginning. And one of my favorite things to see that has a really quick impact. Okay. So what, let me make sure I'm understanding this right. So just some kind of um, uh, maybe like knee height elevated Perfect. platform. And yep. when they get up there and you get them to sit down or be calm for a second, you give them a treat. Absolutely. Something delicious. And they just just like if every time you sat at your desk, I gave you a hundred dollars, I bet soon you're going to be like, I'm sitting at my desk. Those are some of the money. (laughs) (laughs) And it's the same thing to them. Food speaks enormously. I have one dog that would probably be excited about a carrot and I have another one who's very picky. So you need to find what excites your dog, what motivates them. What's that hundred dollar or a thousand dollar treat to them. That's like, awesome. I go up here and this is when all the good things rain down on me. And that's what we want. Gotcha. Love that. Awesome. Love that. Such good questions. So we will uh, be right back with more Nicole after this break. Love it. I spend a lot of time in the backyard and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And at 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. 
One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. <laughs> hey, everyone. Let's all stop what we're doing and take a moment. You see, every moment can be kind of special. But they can be loud moments, goofy moments, dorky moments. It doesn't matter. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Dear John, I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious, and I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to when you checked on me? I don't want to leave, but remember, when I quit, you quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart and don't let it quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range today. For help keeping yours at a healthy range, text PRESSURE to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio, take one. Behold the angry giant. Try it again, Alberto. Behold the angry giant. Perfect. Good luck tonight. Behold the angry giant. Yay! Read me another one, Dad. This is WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. Explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. All right, welcome back, everybody. So we're sitting here with Nicole. She just gave me this awesome tip on how to get my dogs to calm down a little bit when uh, we have visitors and people are coming into the backyard and, and all of the bounciness and hyperness that I love, but I still need to try and control. Um, When I was talking to Sylvia earlier, um, getting ready for you to come on the show, and she was telling me that you have some experience working with uh, what she called like celebrity dogs and and in the in the biz down there in Southern California. Um, Tell me a little bit about that. Like what are some of the recent projects that you've worked on? So, yeah, I think it goes two ways. Um, I work with a high-end clientele in Los Angeles, which I'm really lucky to do. Um, And then on top of that, I work with dogs that are working TV dogs. So it's a bit two different celebrity worlds out here in our house. Um, And one of those is I train dogs that do productions, and then my own dogs do production work as well. Um, Both of mine. I just want to like time out and take note of the photos behind Nicole (laughs) of like Maggie, her supermodel, like total side eye. With the hat. (laughs) Rocky's up there too. There he is. So I mean, you know, there's Rossi. So yes, hi, a very celebratorial dogs in her own home there. It was funny. I posted a TikTok video and someone's like, I wasn't even thinking about it. I was just like talking. And someone's like, I love the artwork you bought. And I was like, oh, that's just a, I was like, what artwork? It's like the dog pictures. I was like, no, that's my dogs. It's like how you have your kids' pictures. These are my kids' pictures. <laughs> it's not As we party. should. Sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah, both mine do production work and training for production works a little bit different than um, normal dog training in a few ways. And both mine have done a bunch of stuff. Most recently they're in hot dog on HBO, the dog grooming show. He has another dog grooming show coming up, which is why he's looking very scruffy. That's okay though. <laughs> um, and eight months old, Rusty did his first feature film with Josh Dumal and Megan Fox called Think Like a Dog. He did Neiman Marcus at three months old. So he just burped in my face. Very sexy. Um, <laughs> and so busy, busy dog, working dogs. And I so got what is, Roxy. What is, 
that, that like like sorry to interrupt but i no. mean that's like kind of fascinating to me that even like at a young age do you think that that's something that you had access to because of connections somewhere else or did you wake up and you're like my dog is just so adorable i need to find a way to get him involved here great question um i first got into it with my other dog maggie who's oh pretty much retired now she is 13 and when i was back in university I had a friend that trained dogs for TV work. So she did the dog in Frasier and a lot of other big, big movies, Marley and me. And I would ride my horse by and see all these dogs doing these amazing tricks. And I was like, oh my gosh, mind blown. I want to do that just for fun. And so while I was in regular university, I went to school to study exotic animals and began working with exotic animals in production and TV work. So bears and tigers, hyenas, lions, you name it, trained it. And so a little bit down the line, I was like, maybe I could see if Maggie could learn some of these things just for fun. And turns out I like training dogs even more than I'd like training the lions and tigers. <laughs> so I feel like it's a lot lower risk level, a lot lower risk, like not as much adrenaline. Happening they want to the work day. to like please you and not to like eat you or get the steak. Not that they're <laughs> going to eat you, but, <laughs> and so I just absolutely loved it and fell in love with it and been so lucky over the years to work on some amazing productions. And I grew up in Los Angeles. So like many people in Los Angeles, I grew up acting and modeling on TV sets and things. So that really was my second home. I didn't like miss so many birthday parties and Chuck E. Cheese play dates because I was filming a commercial or something, but that became like a comfort zone to me. So now being able to share that with my dogs is really special to me. Um, I got Rossi with the idea of doing production work, but if he didn't like it, we wouldn't do it. That was kind of our agreement together, but seems he likes working more than me and Maggie both. So he's a little workaholic. So worked out for all of us. And that was something I discussed. Rossi's from a breeder and Maggie's from a rescue. And I was like, I want a really super confident dog just because these are my goals with him. Sure. And Our breeder did a lot of ENS work, which is, for those that don't know, early neurological stimulation, which means doing stuff with him before his eyes are even open, putting him on his black, smelling things, having him hear things when his ears are open, really setting him up for success to be a super confident dog. So setting us both up. And now he's a busy working dog. And I think that's what he loves more than anything besides eating food. (laughs) I've never heard of the ENS thing before. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of rescue dogs, but I'm a fan also of reputable breeders. And there's a lot of breeders that aren't reputable. Sure. So I have a blog post about to come out on like what to look for in a breeder. Um, And a big part of that for me is genetic testing, health testing of the parents, including eyes, hips, which is OFA or pen hip, which means it's a third party vet viewing your dog's x-rays, making sure they're safe to breed and not gonna pass on hip issues. And then another part of that is doing either puppy culture or ENS. And they say it makes a huge difference in the dog's confidence. And then that's also when the dog's socialization periods form. And so dogs naturally aren't scared of things when they're babies. And that's the best time to just introduce them to new things and it won't become scary later on in life. So when he hears fireworks outside, he goes outside and he watches the fireworks. And it's because He's had so much stimulation as a baby and we set him up for success. We don't just overflow him with it. It's like little bits day by day, but it makes such a difference for them. And that period's only so long. So it's important to get socialization in and it really pays off. Love that. So I just want to jump in, Nicole, because this I've heard you now twice say this and obviously as a fellow trainer, I so appreciate it. Um, You talk about I had this goal, this was my goal, and this is why I got the dog that I got. And I think that that's so invaluable to maybe people out there who want to be dog parents or who are thinking of maybe like yourself, adding a second dog into their home. You know, I know I had really specific goals when I adopted Juniper. So I just want to talk to you about like the importance of what would you say a person should lay out for themselves in terms of like, how far ahead they should be thinking when they want to get a dog. Absolutely. Such a good question. And something that's probably not discussed enough. Um, My older dog, Maggie, is very particular. 
So she unfortunately was attacked as a puppy from bigger dogs. So she's not always the most comfortable with a larger dog. And that's something I myself know. And I would never want to bring in a dog to our home that she's not comfortable with. She does love puppies. And once the puppies grow up to be adult dogs, she seems to love those dogs. So I knew to set her up for success, it needed to be a younger dog. So that was like one of my goals when I was looking in shelters and seeing for a dog to fit our lifestyle. Um, I do a lot with my dogs and whether it's, if they're not acting, that's fine. But we do scent work. I travel with my dogs like before pandemic, like two years ago, I think him and I did like 15 flights together that year. So we're, we're, we're travelers and that's something I enjoy. And it's something I want my dogs to be able to enjoy. So it's a particular lifestyle. I'm pretty active, not crazy active, but pretty active. I mean, I go hiking, I do paddle boarding, we ride motorcycles and my dogs do all of that with me. And I want them to be able to enjoy this lifestyle. So having a confident dog or a dog I could build confidence onto, mm. I know would be huge. As a dog trainer, I have a lot of dogs in my home. So I need a dog that's excited about this. It shouldn't be stressful when I bring a new dog over, but it should be exciting to them. So these are all things I took into consideration um, when I was looking for a second dog. And Maggie was getting a bit older. She was about 10 at the time. And I knew... I didn't want to do it too much later because she might not be up for having a puppy in the house or a younger dog. And that's fine. I wanted her to enjoy it. So I think a big thing is thinking about your current dog, thinking about your current lifestyle, how active you are. Do you need a dog that's a couch potato? And you know what? That's fine. There's plenty of breeds that are. There's nothing wrong with that. Do you need a dog that's going to run 15 miles a day with you? That's not me. I don't do that. So figuring out what you expect and what you want out of that relationship. Just like you're not going to be best friends with everybody. Not every dog's going to be a right fit for you. And that's completely fine. Not every breed is going to be. Um, I have both doodly dogs that are poodle mixes. They take a lot of grooming, a lot of time that they don't shed. So to me, those are compromises I'm willing to make. Not everyone wants to sit there and comb their dog out every night. <laughs> that's okay. Um, and then as I started looking, I was just trying to find specific things like that, that fit my lifestyle and that fit Maggie's lifestyle. And I probably, I started looking in shelters before I couldn't find the perfect mix in LA for me, but it took me probably over two years to find the perfect dog for my lifestyle. And everyone's like, you're still looking. And I was like, it's worth it for me to get that right fix. And sometimes it's right away. Sometimes it's not. Um, but I was like, if he doesn't want to do movie work, he won't do movie work, but he still can do active fun things with me. And that's was my goal. But luckily he's super happy about doing everything. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And I think in just a more general sense for the pet owners out there who might not want a movie star dog, like Nicole has, I think the important thing to think about is like, where do you see you in your dog? You know, Nicole mentioned they ride motor, like literally her and her dogs ride motorcycles. They go in a backpack on her back and like, her both her and her boyfriend ride motorcycles and they each take a dog with them so that's like that's like a lifestyle thing that like you need to envision okay i'm going to be on a motorcycle yeah. and the dog will be there what kind of dog do i have if that's your lifestyle maybe don't go adopt a german shepherd um because that's not gonna suit your vision so i think you know the importance of having a vision um is, is just great i love that yeah, and you, figuring out i think so. your active lifestyle or not active your work schedule are you going to be home like maybe mm. you don't have time for a puppy and that's totally fine i got maggie when she was over six months old she was no longer a puppy um and it's to be honest way easier you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night for potty training you don't have to worry about all this socialization stuff and the dog you meet is the dog you get with puppies, it's not that way. You might end up with an insecure dog. You might end up with a really confident, loud barking dog, which mine is. There's, you just don't know. So when you meet an adult dog, granted, he might be a little bit shell-shocked and is in a shelter or somewhere. It's still give him a few days and that's the dog you have, which I love. I think that's so much easier for so many people to think about. And then I think figuring out your housing situation is huge. Like, does your apartment allow dogs over 40 pounds? So look into right. that before diving in and falling in love with the gigantic dog. And if they do, great. But know those things so you don't have to be in a tough situation. I'm trying to figure out how to keep a dog. Nobody so, wants that. So I know we got to take a quick uh, break again here real quick, but I've got a big question after this about information paralyzation. Um, 
I want to I want to talk about. But let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll get right to that. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow, right where you live? That it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you have a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. The storks are bringing me a baby brother! We can do this together! All right, let's go! Storks know how to keep kids safe. Do you? What? Oh my gosh, you don't know! (gasps) I know! You don't! (laughs) Oh man, you laugh when you're uncomfortable. (laughs) No! Making sure your child is in the right car seat is one of the steps to safer travel. I will rock this! You will rock this! To know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Cool, cool, cool. Very cool, very cool. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. It's It's important to plan plan ahead for emergencies, like like the storm. storm. When, when it, it kicked, kicked in, in, we had we a were plan. Separated. We, we were able to get in touch with each other in no, no time. Idea how to find each other. The, the whole experience, experience was, was the most frightening 10 hours of my life. If, if there's, there's one piece of advice I'd offer other moms, moms out there, there, it's to stay it's calm to and keep to the plan. Message. Some parents plan ahead. Some don't. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Now more than ever, family matters, and Surratt Law Practice has your family in mind. Kimberly Surratt and her team have been helping maintain healthy families through their holistic approach to adoption and surrogacy, child custody, estate planning, and more for over 13 years. Your family law concerns are in caring hands with Surratt Law. Schedule your private consultation with a compassionate Surratt Law Practice team member today by calling 775-636-8200 or visiting LawyersForFamilies.com. Surratt Law, where family matters. You're listening to Phoenix Media. Listen live and explore more great shows at phoenixmedia.us. Okay, Nicole, so we were just talking about um, making decisions based on, like, when you're bringing a new dog into your family making those decisions based on your lifestyle and things that you're going to be doing or want to do or things like that. And um, again, so like as a, so like we've always had, like we've never really done breeders or anything like that. We've just gone with the dog that has chosen us that mentality and we've rescued and we've done all these things, but I'm hearing all this stuff and it sounds great. And I, I buy in on all of it, but it also puts me into like kind of a, information paralyzation like wait a second wait like so there's all these different breeds but if it's a puppy it may grow up to be a different personality but what if i do want to ride a motorcycle down the road and, oh my god what, <laughs> like like there's all of these things and i'm like oh it, it almost like shuts me down and i can see with a lot of people where then they just fall into the well there's that cool dog that was on game of thrones i'll just get one of those and then it ends up being a bad decision and then we're just making like how do you or like where do you go to make like, I, I almost feel like i need to go into a dating app to say okay these are the things i like to do these are the things i don't <laughs> like to do and i and need no eyes and tall like it's it, very similar so i get a lot being having doodles like i get a lot of questions like should i get a bernice man dog burn a doodle it's a bernice man dog and a poodle or a golden doodle. And I'm like, those are such different dogs. The fact you're comparing them 
means you need to do research because Bernice Mountain Dog's not high energy. They like the cold. They're huge. There's such a different temperament between a Bernice and a Golden. And those are both major mixes. Mm -hmm. So when you're in a shelter, a lot of times they'll even say, this dog's a Husky mix. This is this mix. So if you're interested in a dog, research it. Or even like you said, you kind of know your lifestyle a little bit. Maybe you don't know if you're going to ride motorcycles. That's fine. (laughs) But I know, I know I'm outdoorsy and I like doing stuff outdoors. So you can go into Google even and say dogs that fit an active lifestyle, breeds that fit an active lifestyle. And it doesn't mean you need a purebred one of those. That's the amazing thing about shelters and mixed breed dogs, both mine are mixed breed, is that it's a mix of everything wonderful, but you are still getting some of those traits. And while the shelter might be guessing, it's a great starting point. So you can say, oh, Rottweiler mix, look it up. Does it fit? Or say, reading about this, I think Shebas are a great fit for me. Then you can go look at Sheba Rescues. You can go on petfinder.com and find mixes or even purebreds that are up for adoption. And that's so huge. And then from there, a lot of times if they're in a foster situation, there's facts about those dogs. Gets along great with kids. You're like, oh, maybe we'll have kids in a few years. Great. That would be nice to know. Or like hates children. And you're like, maybe not the best fit for our household since we have three kids. So reading about some of those things could help you decide. And I think sitting down with, if you have other people in your household sitting down together, if it's just you making a list and saying, am I outdoorsy or am I more like a couch potato? Do I want a dog that's always on? Do I want a dog that can calm down and relax? So you can look for like somewhat active dogs online, active dog breeds. Um, Dogs like to do things with me. And then if you know you want a dog, you're a runner and you're doing stuff every day and you want that dog with you, Look at the working dog lines because those breeds are made to work. And that's such a misconception on people because like, it's cute. That's what I want in my house. And I'm like, cool. Like how busy are you? Because those dogs are bred genetics to work in a field for 10 hours, more than that, like 18 hours. So I'm like, you need to be ready to keep that dog busy. And they're like, oh, okay. That's not my lifestyle. And that's where doing some research is so important because it goes back to like, even the smaller terriers, those are working dogs. They need their mind works. They need to be doing things. They need to be busy. So you need to understand we're not going to fight genetics. So if we can find out even half of the breeds or some of the breeds in a dog, we're like, okay, does this fit my lifestyle? Yes or no. And then you can even, if you're like, oh, we're in a tiny apartment in New York City. Google the best apartment dogs. I know I've done so many blogs on this for other companies. So I know they're out there. And then from there, it's like, this one's great in apartments, but really active. This one's great in apartments, but sleeps a lot. So it can give you a starting point to see what you want, what could be a good fit. And when it's not COVID, go to a dog park and talk to people, go to a shelter and talk to people and see Absolutely. which one's what the personalities are like and what could be a good fit for you instead of just being like, that one's cute. And then a month later, you're like, oh my God. This is a nightmare. Right. <laughs> well, and I think one of the other things that's kind of important to put out there, a lot of the shelters that we've worked with, like good, the good quality shelters, they don't want you to keep an unhappy living situation if you adopt a pet from them. They would Absolutely. much rather you bring that animal back and say, I still want to give somebody a home, but this wasn't the right fit. Like they don't, they don't want to find out that like this didn't work. So I just left this animal in the cage or worse. I took them to a different shelter that ended up putting the animal down. Like there's, in fact, some of them will actually make you sign an agreement that if it doesn't work out, that you have to bring them back. I think most of them do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, again, that's not to say that, you know, three years down the road, I've heard some horrible stories where they're just like, oh, we decided we don't want this dog anymore. And they, they do drop them off. But, Hopefully uh, those people are not our listeners. Uh, I, I don't think they will be <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, um, uh, in, in that first month or two. And, and we've talked about it before, you know, that it takes up to three, do- uh, three months for a dog to truly acclimate, but mm-hmm. um, to, to not stick it out. Like there's that balance, right? Like when you, when you bring them into your home, you're making that commitment that if they pee on the rug, you're not going to just instantly take them away. That's probably more your fault than their fault. But at the same time, if, if they're overly hyper or they do have some kind of aggression towards a family member, it's better not to tough that one out and, and to find a better fit. 
And what we need to remember, though, is if those things happen in the first few days, that might not be our dog. We just took our dog from what they know. And this goes from whether your dog's coming from a breeder or from a rescue. It doesn't matter. There's this two, we call it the two-week period, but I mean, it could be a day, it could be a month. And that's the time for that dog to really feel comfortable. And that's why even when I bring clients' dogs in my home, we don't do training really the first day usually. When I get a new dog, we don't do much the first few days. No one comes over and meets the puppy. It's time for him to adjust and get relaxed and be comfortable because we want them to open up and learn to get to know us. And that's a bonding time. So they might show fear the first day, third day, fifth day. It's not them. And we need to remember that they've just had their world turned upside down. And now they're in a place of new smells, new sights, and they don't know anything here. And I think I'd be scared in that situation. So I can't blame them for being a little bit confused as well. Absolutely. And I think there's a lot to be said too. uh, When you're adopting a dog, whether you're adopting or you're getting a dog from a breeder, it should be in your plans and it should be in your goals to invest in a reputable trainer. Um, It's, you know, it should just be, you should just plan on spending the money because Even if you get a dog who's like two or three years old and they on their profile, it says they're housebroken. They are not housebroken to your house. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you may need help getting those behaviors that like, you know, everyone just thinks that um, they're going to come home and have, you know, the Disney dog who's going to bring them their newspaper (laughs) in the morning. But you have to teach that dog how to do that. They're not just going to like deliver your slippers the first day you roll out of bed and be your best friend until the day you die. Like you need to build that bond. So, Nicole, talk to us a little bit about how you envision or how you help your clients build bonds through training. So obviously a big part of it is training. Um, I also recommend doing some hand feeding of one of their meals just to spend that time together, maybe eventually turning that into a training session. Um, Doing things together to me is a big bonding activity. And I think even like 10 minutes of training really makes you bring out your dog's personality. And I love diving into new dog sports. Um, I've done scent work. I've done fast cat. I've done daft dogs. Like I've tried to touch into a bunch of them as I can because I think that shows you what your dog loves. You can see, do they love to use their nose? Do they love to bounce around doing jumps at agility? And that, I think seeing your dog fall in love with something really makes you happy. And when someone's doing something fun with me, that's how I bond with my friends. And that's how our dogs bond with us too. So no, you don't need to sign up for every course at home. Even right now there's some on Zoom you can do and maybe looking up small things to do online. There's so many things out there that you can experiment with and see what your dog's enjoying. We never want to push a dog, but we can quickly see, is he having fun or is he not having fun? And that's so huge. And for me, for bonding, I take my training everywhere, of course, as a dog trainer, but just simple things. If we're out on a walk and my dogs look at me, that to me is engagement and that's huge. And when they glance at me, I'm like, good boy. Hi there. We're having fun. And that is going to grow his confidence up. When he checks out new things, I'm going to throw him a party because it's super fun and it's exciting. And I probably wouldn't want to look down the gutter, but he did. Good job, buddy. And those things are going to build up our dog's confidence and going to build up our bond together, which I think is so huge. And whether it's you only have time to do 10 minutes of training a day, like don't let that get out of your grasp. Do it. It makes such a big difference. And I've seen so many people say, I have such a different dog than I knew I had. And I just, last year I filmed the pack on Amazon and it was something I'd heard continuously from the dogs and their owners that were on the show because we did so much training with them. And they were like, this is such a different dog and we have such a different bond. And because of the training and that's so huge. And all we did was trained a lot of fun stuff. We trained digging and tugging and scent work. And they're like, oh my God, his personality shining or just we're inseparable now. And it's all through training. So I'd say find different things. If you're not having fun with it, try something else. It should be fun for both you and your dog. If you're both not having fun, time to find a new training, either teacher or new thing online you can follow. There's so many things out there that are accessible to dog owners. So really no excuse. 
Okay, I've got another really important question. We're going to take another quick break, but I'm excited about this one. It's, it's something I see pop up pretty often. So let's take another quick break and then we'll come back. Allison is perfect. I mean, she'd never tell you that. She's humble and perfect. She likes everyone. She even likes her untidy roommate's weird guinea pig. Allison, wait, are you texting and driving? Allison, no, that's the exact opposite of what I was just saying about you. Why, Allison, why? Texting and driving makes good people look bad. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn to spot a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. I'm Paul George. Spot a stroke fast. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals and Wheels America and the Ad Council. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me, but I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. You're listening to Phoenix Media, the future of broadcasting. Listen live at phoenixmedia.us. Okay, so we're back with Nicola and, and Rossi, right? Yes. Yes. And, um, and we just got done kind of talking about, you know, making sure to take that time to invest into your dogs training and spending time with them and all that kind of stuff. And Sylvie even brought up, you know, that's just part of the, uh, not lifestyle change, but it's it's part of the journey when you bring a new dog into your life, just plan on and working with some kind of trainer. Um, But this has also been, you know, time sensitive, like things like money's not just flowing in for everybody everywhere. And it's, it's not necessarily easy, but at the same time, we've brought all these new dogs into our families and, and, and grown that way. Um, how do you know if you're working? Like a lot of people are going to want to go budget on a trainer and, and I can't knock them for that, you know, cause sometimes you may, maybe you can't afford a trainer at all. How can you tell whether you're working with somebody that is, and this is just a hot topic because there's some really, really bad practices out there. How, how do you avoid that and make sure that you're not doing more damage than um, good? Absolutely. So there is a lot of great free content out there and there's a lot of scary, not so great free content out there. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Google. I think like every doctor's nightmare probably. Right. And so (laughs) 
I get it. So I get it all the time when I'm at clients' houses. Like, well, I Googled and saw this. I was like, oh boy. Mm. So I think for one, as a dog trainer, I'm a positive reinforcement dog trainer. What that means is we are rewarding good behavior. The idea thinking is if something occurs that we want to occur again, the more we reward it, the more likely it's going to be to happen again, which makes sense. So if every time you came to my house, I gave you thousand dollars, you probably come to my house a lot. So we reward good behavior. And I think when we're looking online, you can see is somebody being harsh with the dog? Is that dog excited to be in that training video with them? And if not, that's probably not the person I personally would want to hire up to you. That's not the relationship I want with my dogs. My dogs, for everything we do, they consent to it. Whether it's me giving them even an injection or them coming on a hike or a motorcycle ride, if they're going to go to their dog bed, they're not coming. They're excited to come. And that's what I want. When we're, my dogs know the words work, they know we're training. Those are words that make them so excited. And that's because I filled it with treats and praise and belly rubs, and there's never anything forced. And that to me is so huge because I wouldn't want someone to be like, you're doing this job. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't like it. So I and think, I think that's that, also that so big and growing that bond. Yeah, yeah. So that was one of the first times that this was really eye-opening for me. Um, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, there was those really cute dogs that were wearing like the vests and the glasses and the hats and they were walking like on two legs. Oh, yeah. And then mm-hmm. I had read that like, and then I, I, I looked into it a little bit and whether this is true across the board or not, but I was watching them literally being beaten into a corner if their front paws touch the yeah, ground. Yeah, awful. And the after effect, the dog looks happy because it's all stylish and fluffy and cute. But the the way that they got there was so incredibly humane. And then it went viral and people want these kind of dogs and stuff like that. And that's what really opened my eyes to some of the bad stuff that's happening in the rescue community. And so what I'm hearing you say is if like, we should be training through um, love and positivity as opposed to fear and abuse. Absolutely. And there's so many different ways of thinking out there, but a lot of these old school methods have been debunked that they're not the best way of training. And I mean, it makes sense. It's not how we train children. We're not forcing them. Hopefully you're not forcing your kids, but (laughs) we should should be rewarding them. And it's the same with our animals. They're a part of our family and that's what we want. And that's how I think you're going to get the best outcome. And I'm going to have, when I tell my dog to come, He's coming with joy and excitement and running to me. It's not out of fear that he's going to get shocked or scolded Mm -hmm. or hit, God forbid. It's I'm excited to see my mom. And that's what I want. I want my dogs to always be super excited about when I'm asking them to do things. So I think when you're watching a trainer, see how they communicate with their own dog. See how the dog's reacting. Mm. Is its tail up or is it ducked and it doesn't seem too thrilled about the session so what are some of those emotion indicators it's like i mean we all like as a layman it's easy to be like oh my dog's tail's wagging or between its legs but what are some other ones that i'm not as absolutely there's so many different signs of stress this is something when i worked on the pack that was so important for us to watch out for and some of those might be excessive lip licking like licking licking its lips once is normal when it's in there licking its lip with a bunch it's saying hey i'm not too comfortable right now Um, A dog looking away, excessive yawning. If I train my dog at 11 o'clock at night, he might yawn. If he's yawning over and over and over, he's stressed. He's not tired. And that's, I'm not going to train him when he's tired either, but we don't want a dog that's overly stressed. These are big things to look for. Whale eyes, which is mean when our eyeballs kind of show a little bit more. We're showing the white around the eyes. And those are all huge signs of stress. I know Sylvia looks for this in her line of work as well. And it's just something we can look out for. There's an amazing book by Lily Chin, um, it's called, it's an animal body uh, book. Um, yeah, the animal, yeah. And it's just animated. It recently and it goes over like signs of stress. And I, I give it to a lot of my first time dog owner clients mm. before they even get their dogs, read this over. And so many of them have bought it for friends and they're completely eye-opened by it. And it's really clear drawings of things to look for. And I think having a little bit of education before you get your dog on that sort of stuff is so important too. And can be really eye-opening when you see other dogs, you're like, oh, that dog's not too comfortable right now. (laughs) You don't need to be a dog trainer to learn these things. You can easily pick it up and it'll help you understand your own dog a bit more. Like, are we pushing him too much? He's telling us he's not comfortable or telling us he's done. There's so much to learn. I mean, I'm always learning too, so. 
Love that. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely been online and watched videos of other dog trainers and the dogs are like, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that dog's not happy right now, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, Nicole and I both live and work in this unregulated industry, um, you know, as dog trainers, there is no regulation. Anybody can walk out there. Jason, you could walk out your door tomorrow and be like, I love dogs. Well, I'm going to be a dog trainer. I've learned enough from this podcast. I'm starting tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> I could do this. This is my colleague. Yeah. Um, so Nicole, I guess just really quickly, if you were telling a client like where to find a trainer and what to look for when they're looking at a trainer, what would you recommend? Like what accolades should they be looking at? Um, well, if you want to do it in person, obviously look in your area. Um, there's so many different organizations and understanding those is a little bit more helpful. Like APDT is one, but anyone can join APDT. So it's more of a membership, but that can give you trainers near you. And then from there, you can dive into them. CPDT, which is ccpdt.com, I think it is maybe. Um, if you Google it, it'll come up. That can give you a list of certified dog trainers near you. There's so many different resources. So go to a trainer site and read about them. Maybe they're amazing and maybe they have this great history and learn about them. And I think that's one of the best ways to learn. And if you have friends who have amazingly trained dogs, ask them how they train their dog. Did you have a trainer? What were they like? Were they nice to the dog? Were they harsh with the dog? What kind of techniques did they use? Simple things like that. And I get you, you get a whole array of answers. Mm -hmm. And from there, you can choose the best one that's going to fit you and do a consultation with them. That doesn't mean you need to sign up for six months of classes. Just see if it's a good fit for you. And I've heard of so many people who've gone to a class and were like, nope, didn't work. We leave. Mm -hmm. And just remember, you are your dog's advocate. And that's the biggest thing I can say about it is you never want to just hand your leash over to someone. And if they're uncomfortable, take your leash back and say, cool, like I'm standing up for my dog. That's the best thing we can do for our family members and tell, let them take care of them. Absolutely. Yes. And I think it's important to say like you and your dog's trainer are a team. So you should all like each other because you're going to be in each other's lives for the next 10 to 15 years. You know, I still get Christmas cards from my very first training clients, you know, so you're going to be together for a while. Make sure you love your trainer. And, um, and uh, if so you're true. lucky, if you're lucky, you'll get to work with Nicole or I, <laughs> If you're in LA, hit her up. She's amazing. I have, I have a lot of free videos online too. I like to help. Okay, she does. So, so I feel Nicole, like not everyone can afford dog training. So if I can help them out, like a lot of the basics to get you started, I have on my blog. I know you have so much information on your site, Sylvia. And I think that's so nice to be able to help people no matter what, like who don't know what they're doing and let them give a hand to dog training themselves at home get their feet wet and see how much fun it can be to work with their dog. And then maybe they'll want to do more. And really quick, Nicole, what's your Instagram just for everybody? It is N A Ellis. And it's all on my blog, which is Maggie and Nicole.com. Cause Maggie started it off. Maggie's the queen. Love that. And we'll, we'll definitely get that in the show description for you. Yes. It'll be Thank in you. the links. Well, cool. Well, this was so much fun hanging out. I have a quick closing dog joke that we do every week. Oh, bring it on. Oh, yeah. No, it's a good one. Are you ready? Yes. And, and this is this. <laughs> why was the dog such a good storyteller? He knew how to pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> oh, that was good. Low clap. <laughs> I just I think my favorite part of these jokes, Jason, is is the reaction from our guests. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I thought it was going to be a real joke. <laughs> No, hashtag dog dad jokes. Dog all dad dog. jokes. It's dog good, dad. it's good. This is a good closer. <laughs> all of our season one guests have the disadvantage of not knowing this is happening. Right, right. You know? We're like, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you are amazing. You. I love you so much. You. I'll thank see you, you on the trails. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Bye. I want to take a quick moment and thank everybody who joined us today on today's podcast and for hanging out with myself, Sylvia and Nicole. I had a blast talking to you as always, Miss Sylvia. Um, anything that we had or discussed on today's podcast, including websites and products will be linked in the show description below. Speaking of, if uh, you haven't subscribed, make sure that you subscribe. We're on um, Spotify and all other major uh, podcast 
what, what would you call that, Sylvia? Podcast what? Hosting services? List, listening platforms. Yep. And then obviously we're on um, uh, all of our social media. So you've got Dog Up in This Bitch on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, I have Forever USA over on um, the same Instagram. What, what is, is it just Dog Up in This Bitch for Instagram? It's literally Dog Up in This Bitch. Make Sweet. sure you're following Nicole at N.A. Ellis. And uh, we'll also link her gram in the description for you as well because she posts amazing training videos there too. Awesome. Can't wait until next week. I'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye.